it's Dr. Jason Pikin, and welcome to another episode of the Digestion Diaries. What today's episode is going to be about is about swelling, sp swelling specifically in the hands and the toes, feet, ankles, because it's something that comes up every once in a while in my office, but in the last two weeks, it's come up a few times, mainly because I'm filming this at the end of August, and I want to just explain all the things that come together that make me see more swelling in the hands and feet, especially at the end of summer, but I do see it all year round. So we're going to be talking about, of course, the physical, the chemical, and the emotional, the three aspects that cause all problems. So what's interesting is most people don't even pay much attention to these little problems. One of the complaints um, that came up because I take a really detailed history in my office. So a patient came to me mainly because he had back pain and pain in his butt and the side of his leg, the things that you'd really commonly go to a chiropractor for, of course. But when I do a history with somebody, I really try to find out everything that's going on with them. And one of the things I ask, are there any problems with numbing, tingling, any issues with the distal extremities, the hands and the feet? And he said, well, you know what? I wasn't even thinking of saying it, but my ankles swell. My, my toes are actually even swollen. And it's only been happening for the past six to eight weeks. And I wasn't even thinking of mentioning it. And it came up again. I was just listening to a bunch of people talk. I was hanging out with them. So um, it wasn't really uh, listening to some strangers talk. And one of them was complaining that he thinks he needs uh, his ring resized. He needs to get it stretched and he's already done this once before and it's only because he feels like yeah it's just you know arthritis now this guy is only somebody in his uh, 40s let's say mid to late 40s I'm not even sure I know him but not that well and he's almost accepting the fact that his fingers are getting big probably because he's seen it in his family and this is one thing that many people get conditioned to they get conditioned to accepting these problems of life, especially health issues, because they gradually happen. They happen so slowly, so subtly, that they almost think it's normal. It's not some one day you wake up and you have these big swollen hands and big swollen feet. It's a process that's been going on gradually. Well, not with the patient I saw that had it uh, over the past six weeks. That's something different. I'll describe it in a second. But what made me think about doing this video is the person uh, I was listening to the conversation with about his hands because he just basically accepted it. And one of the things I try to teach people is to not accept what's happening to you. We do have to get older. Everybody has to get older. We have to age. We're going to become wrinkly and old. But we can do it gracefully. And we don't have to do it as fast as uh, we think we do. We can age gracefully. We can stay younger longer. And most people think that what's happened to their family, other people around them, is okay to happen to them. Or maybe it's not okay, but it's acceptable. It's just the thing that they have to deal with in life. The fact that they'll have to be on certain medications. That they won't be able to do the things that they were doing when they were young. And I really don't believe that. You see, my idol is Jack LaLanne. And I hope I, we see a picture of him right here from my assistants that are putting up Jack Elaine and Elaine Elaine, maybe, his wife. When they were in their 80s and 90s, these people were extraordinarily fit. Another idol I have is my grandfather. My grandfather on my mother's side, at 80 years old, he retired from being a glazier. That means he worked with his hands, he worked physically hard. A glazier's work with glass and mostly him with glass, windows, frames, and he worked physically hard his whole life. And one thing that sticks in my head is that at 80 years old, on his retirement day, when he finally closed up his shop, he said, Jason, feel this, just touch it. And I did, and it, his bicep felt like a rock, a rock in his bicep at 80 years old. And you know what? That was impressive. And he lived a really long, healthy, happy life up until the last few years where the brain started to go. That's in my Alzheimer's prevention video. Uh, but he lived, he got the most physically out of his life and this is why I'm making this video. So let's get to it. So why do things swell? So I'm going to go into something called intracellular and extracellular water. And you have to just understand this concept of intracellular, extracellular water. So 
Here's how I can explain this to you most easily. Picture a baby. We call babies juicy, right? Juicy babies. That you want to pinch their cheeks and kiss them and they're all great. So when we're born, we have these big juicy cells. And as we age, and let's say we get to this age of 90, I don't know if we're going to call a 90-year-old juicy. It's just not the term we use for a 90-year-old. They could be cute and adorable and sweet and loving, and you still might want to kiss them, but I don't know if you want to eat them up at 90. They're just not juicy. So what will happen is we'll have these big, gigantic cells, and slowly, hopefully slowly, over our life, they will shrink and wrinkle, right? Now, let's say you have 100% water out in your body. Okay, there's two compartments, two compartments for that water. That water is either inside your cells or outside your cells, floating around your bloodstream. Intracellular, extracellular, inside, outside. When you're young, when you're a youth, when you're a baby, you have a really high amount of intracellular water. And as we age, that water tends to leave our cells and it goes into the extracellular space. What that means is it's floating around your bloodstream. And that's what causes the wrinkliness. Now, what causes that to speed up is the aging process, and what causes the aging process to speed up is the point of this video. How you treat yourself. How the environment is treating you. You see, if you live a harsh, fast life out in the sun all the time, exposed to the elements, you might have a lot of fun, but um, you might also look a little wrinkly and old early. Think of somebody, unfortunately, that lives in a third world country outside in the elements working physically hard and not getting the nutrients they need to support their life to, to thrive. They may survive, but they may look old early. Uh, open up any National Geographic magazine, if you know what that is, and you'll probably see examples of this. Contrast that with somebody that really is fed well and nurtures their body, and you can see their skin, their health vibrant going on many, many decades into their 80s and 90s and hopefully hundreds. So the way you treat your body, the way you feed your body has a lot to do with the size of these cells. And there's three main factors, okay, that contribute to the size of these cells and then contribute to whether you have swelling in your fingers and your toes. So the number one thing is the percentage of muscle. Remember, I always talk about physical, chemical, emotional. Well, here's the physical part. If you have a lot of muscle, muscle holds water better than fat does. So what you want is to increase the amount of muscle, the percentage of muscle in your body. You don't have to become big. I'm not a big guy. I'm a pretty skinny guy, but I have a high percentage of muscle, and that's what keeps my intracellular water, my cellular hydration, really high, which keeps my skin looking good, hopefully, and uh, it'll stay that way. And how you keep that intracellular water high is by having a high percentage of muscle. So exercise is definitely a part of that. How also do you increase your percentage of muscle? Well, 80 to 85 percent of muscle building is actually your diet. It's actually what you eat. Unless you have six to eight hours to exercise, unless you're running around a playground as a youth, you're not really building muscle because of the exercise. What you're doing is you can lower fat and increase your percentage of muscle if you eat the right way. So that happens to be point two of making your cells big and juicy. See, if you have good foods going into your body, you'll have big, juicy, young cells. So here, let me give you two examples and you decide which one of these foods will make your cells big and juicy and which one of them will make it shrunken and wrinkly, okay? So first is um, french fries from a fast food restaurant. The second is uh, a salad. Got it? Which one? Yeah, I think you know. All right, the second one. Uh, let's go away from potatoes. Let's go with uh, chicken wings with some hot sauce on it. And let's go with uh, just the side there, just the celery. So let's say you juiced some celery and, and drank that celery juice. Can you picture which one would enhance your cells and which one would make it smaller, okay? So let's say you really love pizza, okay? So you're having, you know, a big, you're overeating this pizza, you're stuffing yourself this pizza, but 
The other hand, the other choice is, before you have pizza, you have a big gigantic salad, um, a big bowl of broccoli that's steamed, maybe even some butter on it, some salt and pepper, some spices. Hey, uh, let's, let's make it um, curried um, uh, broccoli. And you have this big bowl of broccoli, and then you probably fill yourself up so you only have a slice of pizza. Which one is gonna create bigger, juicier cells, smaller cells? Okay, so how you nurture yourself, how you choose your foods is going to create bigger cells. So now, if you have these big juicy cells, there's less extracellular water, less water in your bloodstream. That's what causes these hands and feet and ankles to get big. Let's go into the third reason, toxins. Okay, so what is a toxin in the first place? Well, toxins could be the crap that you're eating, uh, let's say Mike and Ike's or um, uh, some jelly beans that you're eating, uh, you know, some of that, more of that fast food. Um, and your body really doesn't need that in its system. A toxin is really anything that's not food that we tend to eat. And there are a lot of chemicals that the standard American eats that they're not supposed to. A Diet Coke even. Uh, people think it's healthier than a Coke but it's really a can full of chemicals, sweet tasting chemical, that's gonna cause harm to your body. If you're drinking Diet Cokes, you're gonna have an increase in extracellular water, and that's gonna help to increase the, the, the bloating in your body and the fingers and toes uh, getting more swollen. So toxins are also things that are in our environment. Let's take that broccoli that I was talking about. Well, what if that broccoli was sprayed with pesticides and the genetic makeup of your body makes it so that you're not good at eliminating those toxins from your body? Well, that can be considered a toxin. To some people, wheat, even a whole wheat bread, because of gluten, which is a protein in it, is a toxin. Now, that's not for everybody, but sometimes we have these sensitivities or allergies to foods that make them toxic to us. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to make the right choices and choose that broccoli over the pizza, or if you're sensitive to broccoli because you feel you get bloated from broccoli, choose something else that you think is healthy. And if you're eating in a really healthy manner and you still have these swollen fingers and toes and ankles, well then maybe some other toxin is in your body that you need help figuring out. And that's the, what you need a health practitioner like myself functional medicine doctor, an acupuncturist, a great chiropractor, anybody that's versed in the toxins of the world and how to get rid of them for your body. Because what I see is when people have these swelling problems, as soon as I put them on a detoxifying like diet, which basically means eating healthy, and then the, the swelling just magically goes away. Now it's not really magic. It's just because they're nurturing their body that the swelling goes away. So. What did we talk about so far? We talked about increasing your percentage of muscle through exercise somewhat and through putting the right nurturing foods in your body. Those, those correct nurturing foods will also increase the amount of nutrients going inside your cells, which will make them bigger, and it will decrease your toxic exposure. So you'll have less swelling. So the point of all this is we shouldn't accept the fact that we're getting older and our knuckles should get bigger and that our rings don't fit anymore and that we might have to buy bigger shoes because our feet are getting bigger. We should ask ourselves, why is this happening in the first place? And instead of taking a prescription diuretic, a medication that helps you to get rid of water from your body, well, why not try to look at the quality of things that you're putting in your body? This, in turn, will help your digestion. Remember, it's the Digestion Diaries, and this is why I'm here to educate you in the first place. So I hope all this information helps. I wanted to take some time and say these points to, to not just accept the, the problems that show up in your life, to work on yourself and get motivated to get healthy. And if you want any help, visit my website, drjasonpikey.com. Ask me for help. I'd really be happy to help with, uh, with any problems you're having. By the way, if you have any comments, please leave them down here. If you have any questions for me, other health topics, any pressing things that you'd love to learn about, I'd love to explain them to you because my goal is to get them into the simplest explanation form possible. See, I'm not really the best at giving you scientific breakdowns of everything that I understand. 
I'm really good at dumbing it down, I believe. And if you believe so too, you'll like this page, you'll follow me and subscribe, and you'll ask me more questions. Ask me to answer your health questions. I'd love to help you out. All right, have a great day.